Now, shows like Mad Men, Sopranos, Game of Thrones, they all have an ongoing storyline over the course of the entire run, but they also have multi, multiple mini-stories in each episode. Now, the A story is the main story of the week that follows the character's dilemma, the hero's dilemma. The B, C, D stories in television also have something to do with the main hero, but they're different stories. And they alternate in a very particular way, and it doesn't matter who you are as a creator, you will always alternate your structure in this general way. Soderbergh, Cronenberg, even David Lynch, he's probably dragging, kicking, and screaming, but he follows this form as well. If you don't follow it, great, I'm happy, I love that you're going to break these rules, but you have to show me that the story's going to work. If you want to be the first to break this pattern, I'm with you. But the pattern to be broken has to be broken in a way I've never seen. Let's try it next time we do a consult. Now, here are the four storylines in Mr. Robot. Can the hero, Elliot, stop the big villains, the bank? Can he find them and stop them? He has to find them. That's Creed. This is a mystery thriller. Can Elliot and his best girl, who's not his sexual or romantic partner, can they bond and help each other heal? That's the B storyline. C is, will Heliot team up with his mentor in this story, Mr. Robot, to bring down the corrupt system? And the fourth, the D storyline is, will Elliot save his shrink from her horrible boyfriend? Each of these storylines get asked in the cold open in the first act, and they get answered by the end of the fourth act. They all get wrapped up, and that is critical. Every one of your storylines in television must be wrapped up and answered yes or no by the end of the show. So how does this four storyline work in Mr. Robot? Okay, so Mr. Robot, and we already know what the logline is. Let's ask ourselves, what's the hook? Well, we already said we want to see this cyber vigilante win against the Matrix, okay? We want to see whether he can do it. And in the cold open of this story, now I suggest you guys get the opening pilot episode of Mr. Robot up with you on your screen and watch this with me so you'll understand this structure really well or get the script, either one. I can't show it to you here for copyright reasons, but I urge you to go through it with me. And by the way, guys, I really urge you to get the script and watch it as you watch the episode. It's amazing what you learn when you do that. Now, this is a mystery thriller. Now, a few years ago, all I did was movies. I didn't do television at all. Now, 80% of my business is television, maybe 90. I learned a lot about movie genre, and I learned a lot about mystery thrillers. I have a book coming out on it. Mystery thrillers in movies, I thought, oh, God, when television began such a big deal, I thought, am I even going to work? Can I take what I've learned in movies and put them in television? The great answer is yes. Everything I've learned about movies work in television. There's only two big differences. We already mentioned heroes don't change. People don't change, and you can tell a lot more than show. Those are the two critical differences between movies and TV. Everything else is the same. All the genre patterns I'm going to show you work in television, just as they do in movies. And Mr. Robot is a mystery thriller. What does that mean? One of the, reasons, one of the things it means is that the villain is hidden. And he's not a small villain. He's a huge villain. He is the most malevolent villain you could ever imagine, but he's hidden at the beginning of the story. So when we open Mr. Robot, how do we open it? Elliot says in a VO, there is a conspiracy bigger than all of us. It's a group of people that we don't know the 1% against the 99. And as he tells us this, we see the shadowy, mostly probably white men, <laughs> standing around behind a boardroom, and we don't see their faces. Why? Because remember, in a mystery thriller, whether it's Chinatown, LA Confidential, Salt, any of these movies, the, the real villain is hidden at the beginning of the story. We don't see him, but everything happens because of him. There's a powerful group of people out there. And they run the world. Yes, they're invisible. Now, mystery thrillers are very hot in television right now. I urge you to think about making one. Man in the High Castle, which is a brilliant adaptation of a Philip Dick story. Actually, it's not adaptation. It's a hallucination. They're completely changing it. Jessica Jones, Mr. Robot, mystery thrillers, many coming. I'm working on several right now. So just let's look at what a mystery thriller means. Mystery thrillers are about hidden evil. Whether it's Maltese Falcon or Inception or LA Confidential or Salt, thrillers are not, it's not the same as a thriller. In a thriller, the villain comes out and you, and you see the hero battling him very, fairly quickly. You may not know who he is, but you see him battling him. But that's true in Seven, 
but it's not true in Salt or Inception because in a mystery thriller, there's three levels of story plot. Okay, stay with me, guys. This is a little complicated, but you need to know this because Mr. Robot has them all. And the reason they have them is the mystery thriller audience wants to be baffled. You ever seen anybody who loves to do crosswords? They're looking at the New York Times crossword puzzle, and what are they doing? They're going, oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I don't think I can solve it. Oh, Peter, I don't think I can solve it. Oh my God. What is that? That's the adrenaline that comes from well, you looking at a puzzle, not being able to solve it. Then when they do solve one, what do they do? They go, ah! Oh! They get a kind of a dopamine high. It's a kind of an orgasm because they have now solved the mystery. That's all mystery thriller does for you. It poses a mystery and then it lets you solve it, okay? Not my genre. When I went to Inception, I was like, what the hell's happening? I'm going to go. I'm going to leave the theater. But the mystery thriller audience loves that mystery. Now, that means they crave a complicated story. So there's three stories in mystery thrillers. There is the distraction plot. That is what you see quickly in Act One. That looks like the real crime that's going on in the story, but it's actually just a distraction. The second plot is the emotional change in the hero that helps him solve the crime. And the third plot is the real crime, what's really going on. That does not get revealed till Act Five in the story. Now, it's hidden. Okay, so in this story, it's the fact that this bank runs our world. This bank controls all of us, but that's not what we see at the beginning of the story, okay? What do we see? We see a hero with a core wound. If you look at the beginning of the story, you'll see that Elliot is sitting in a subway with his hoodie on. He's got hooded eyes. He looks like a crazy guy. He's a great actor, and he is a crazy guy. He's paranoid. He believes that the world's out to get him, and in fact, he's mentally ill. His core wound is that he cannot, cannot connect to people, that he is alone, that he's helpless, that he is emotionally unable to ever be with anybody. And so what we see in the cold open, which simply means the first five pages of the script, the first five minutes of the story, we see him on a subway, we see him saying, there's all these crazy people out here and, they, and there's, there's conspiracy to, 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 to damage us all. And then we see him suddenly say, shit, I should have gone to Angela's birthday party. Why do we see those two things? Because the B story here is, can Elliot bond to his friend Angela and not feel alone? So we're going to see the A and the B story in the cold open. You always do. Later, we're going to see what those two are in Breaking Bad. The cold open gives us those two storylines, and they're going to alternate through the entire rest of the hour pilot. He says, I should have gone to Angela's birthday party, but I didn't because I cannot connect to people. Guys, if you want to give us sympathy for your hero, show his core wound or her core wound immediately. Show it in the first minute of the story. If you've ever gotten a note that says, Mm, your hero isn't sympathetic. It's because you're not showing their core wound. What makes you like someone? Not because they're rich or famous or strong. That doesn't want. What makes you like someone? When they show you their vulnerability, when they show you that they are screw ups just like you. This is what great stories do immediately. And this is what we get with, with Elliot. 